Now, in case you didn't know it, the historic Supreme Court uh, judgment today has changed a lot of things. Okay? Now, for the purposes of this recording, I just want to focus on one of the things it has changed. Yes? Actually, the Supreme Court uh, ruling today has made it possible for somebody to provide very strong grounds why one of the candidates should not be allowed to stand in the elections, in the fresh elections that have been called. Okay? Now, the Supreme Court has, uh, in passing its verdict, has not given us the full reasons yet. But it is very obvious that the reasons why the Supreme Court ordered a fresh election is because of malpractices. Okay? Crimes were committed. Okay? Illegalities were committed. Okay? These are all the things that have caused the Supreme Court to scrape yeah, the presidency of Uhuru Kenyatta. Okay? But then now we are left with the question, who is going to take responsibility? Who is going to take responsibility for the great crimes against the Kenyan people? Now, before I even go further, I know a lot of Kenyans are very confused because uh, when they look at the opposition, they don't see anything else except Ray Lodinga. Yeah, this bigger than life figure. But excuse me, this is not about Ray Lodinga. This is about a crime committed to, according to my estimates, to 8 million Kenyans. Yeah? 8 million Kenyans who turned up to vote for a candidate and their votes did not matter. Their votes were just cancelled to mean zero. Instead, we were given a computer-generated president. Vifaranga via computer. That's what we got. Okay? Now, I'm very well aware that in their ruling, the Supreme Court judges said that they did not find any wrongdoing in the third respondent. Okay? That's fine. But I believe it is possible to prove in a court of law Yes, that actually the third respondent was responsible for everything. Because let me ask you a question. All this rigging, hiding the server, saying all oh, the servers in Europe, uh, changing from 35, um, uh, 34S, yeah, which required enormous resources. Where were these resources coming from? I put it to you that the resources which were being used were actually government resources. I put it to you that the people involved in this, in all, in all this hanky-panky were actually government officials. Okay? Now, we also have very clear evidence that the election results were predicted long before we went to the polls. Why do I say this? They were predicted because riot police, the military, were trained yeah, to combat with election, so-called election violence. And they were sent to so-called hotspots. Yes. And uh, the kind of, uh, the kind of uh, military force, because I have no other name to call it, the kind of military force, because these guys had guns, they had buttons, yes. As we speak, uh, there's a family still mourning the death of their young child. Yes, 11-year-old child, shot as she played in the balcony from downstairs. Now, do you know how many people can take a shot from a downstairs position and kill a person who is several floors up? Do you know how many people in Kenya can take that kind of shot? That's obviously a very well-trained person. Government. Okay? A kid was clobbered. A toddler, barely six months old, was clobbered. Okay? Now, anyway, let me not get emotional. So what, it is very clear that government forces were used, yes, and they were put in place knowing very well that the election results which were going to be announced would not be received well by the opposition. Yes, that's very clear. That is very obvious. Okay? So government resources were used. The government prepared for an election results they already knew. Okay? So who's going to take responsibility for all this? Who? Who's going to take responsibility for all this? Who are these people taking the orders from? Because you know soldiers never act alone. There's no policeman or soldier will do anything without an order. Yeah? Afande, kwenda inje shika uyu mutu. They've been ordered, go and arrest somebody. Okay? Afande, kwenda inje, watu ambao na pigana, piga resasi. That is an order. Okay? Afande, kwenda inje, watu ambao na lete shida, chapa na rungu, lakini hapana tumia resasi. Those are orders. 
So who issued the orders for the police to go out and kill innocent Kenyans? Who? Okay? Anyway, let's wrap it up. So we have evidence that the government planned in advance, knowing very well that they were going to rig the election massively. Okay? Now, I have been on the ground and I've been monitoring this election right from the beginning. Okay? I can tell you for a fact that the, the election results that are hidden in the server that the IBC has refused to release. Okay? Those election results will show that Raila Odinga won by a big margin. And I will tell you something more. Even in those election results which are already in the server, those election results were already uh, uh, topped up to favor the president. Already they were topped up. The ones that Raila won uh, that I hidden in the server. Now, how were they topped up? Dead voters? The voter register was never cleaned up. Yes. And various other irregularities, which already happened. Yes, at that stage. Now, the fact that Raila had already won by such a wide margin is what called for this massive rigging, never before seen, of this election. Yes, in order to give the loser a margin of over 1.4 million votes against the actual winner. Okay? And in my view, this is what brought the whole problem. Because had, the, had these people rigged the election in such a way that the difference was small, they may have gotten away with it. They may have gotten away with it. Okay? But uh, I'm afraid the opposition had won by such a wide margin that they had to rig this election by such a wide margin. And this is where we got what we got. Okay? So who's, who's going to take responsibility for this? Who is going to be punished for this great crime against the Kenyan people? You tell me. Now, those who, who are used to saying, oh, propaganda, oh, Chris, this is propaganda, oh, where are you getting information from? I'm very sorry. Sasa, Aun, and Jay, you have got nowhere to stand because I'm standing on the Supreme Court ruling. And the Supreme Court ruling has proved beyond any reasonable doubt that there were malpractices in this particular election. Now, it is very sad as a nation, we have gotten into the culture of saying, oh, there were small malpractices, but the election was okay. Or there were a few mistakes you're going to correct later, but the election was okay. This is what we did in 2013. Yes? And this is what two judges of the Supreme Court told us in their judgment. Oh, there are a few malpractices, but they are not enough to overturn the whole election. It is okay. Yeah? <laughs> so by extension, somebody goes and forges a Form 34A, uh, but it's okay. Those are small malpractices. We'll correct them later. Yeah? Then somebody organizes for genuine form 34As which are already in IBC which uh, a very good lawyer called the Bermuda Triangle form 34As enter then they vanish okay so somebody goes and organizes for th form 34As 11,000 of them to vanish yeah, but it's okay that's a small election malpractice gosh and then after all that drama you, you're in a very big hurry to swear uh, the loser as the winner of the election. You're in a very big hurry. It's being hurried up. It must be done immediately, immediately. To such an extent when the opposition go to ABC to ask one or two questions, uh, you'll remember I reported in this channel. The opposition people, uh, Kinamudavadi, Weta, uh, Raila and so on, they ask, uh, we understand that you're about to announce the results. You know what the ABC said? No, 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 no. We don't want to announce any results. No, 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 no. They denied. They lied. Gosh, okay. So as soon as the I, as soon as NASA were away from uh, bombers, they continued their arrangements and quickly organized and saw in the loser. Who's going to take responsibility for all this massive theft, massive crime against the Kenyan people? Now it appears nobody. We know that all these people, the person who must take responsibility for all these people, were, all these orders which are uh, given is nobody else but the president himself, President Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta, must take responsibility. Okay? He must take responsibility for these orders which were issued. Even if he did not issue it himself, people he has appointed issued them. And that is why it does not make any sense for the president again to stand, when we go back to the election, for the president again to vie. It does not make any sense. Does it make sense to you? Election offenses were committed. 
illegalities were committed, but it's okay. We just go to the election again. Gosh. Now, it's very predict predictable what's going to happen. The same man with the same power is going to do exactly the same thing. He's going to give exactly the same orders. Police are going to kill people, pick up people in social media who are actually pointing out what's happening, people like Kumekucha. Yeah? They are going to do all manner of things, and then finally they're going to forge those from 34 years, and they're going to win the election. Simple as that. So in my humble view, without any fear or favor, the president should not be allowed to stand again. The president and Jubilee are guilty of very serious election offenses, which somebody must answer for. But even as we discuss the issue of who will answer and how, there must be some sort of deterrent so that in future nobody else, no incumbent tries these tricks which you have seen, which has cost so many Kenyan lives. The president should not be allowed to stand again for election. And that should make sense to any peace-loving Kenyan and any Kenyan who can think straight without any tribal emotions coming in their way. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekuja.